Okay, here we are. Welcome back to another one of these. Um, I promised I had uh, a lot of more ideas, and um, I think the timing is just uh, just right for this one because um, Econoline Crush are uh, finally coming back. Uh, Econoline Crush are a rock band from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and uh, they have. I guess they're um, synonymous with uh, the industrial rock scene. Uh, that's when they had their biggest hits. And um, they've been active-ish, uh, touring uh, off and on since their hiatus. Um, but they're finally ready to uh, put out a new record. Um, it's been a 12-year hiatus since the last one, Ignite, so I thought I'd do another one of these ranking videos, because they're really fun, and um, I'm just really stoked for the new album, which is probably going to be called either When the Devil Drives or um, Eponymous, like self-titled, like kind of a new beginning, a new start. So uh, we'll see. Um, but uh, just last night, they released the first single from it, so their first new recorded material in 12 years, and the new material is a re-recording of a 12-year-old song from Ignite, which I think I mentioned, from 2008, uh, which was one of the 10, 11 tracks off the album and the second single. So um, they re-recorded it, and it's called get out of the way, which is what it was called before, but it's get out of the way, and then in parenthesis, gold heart. Uh, you could also call it get out of the way 2020. Anyway, um, yeah, so welcome to it. Um, hope everyone out there is well and uh, healthy and uh, fighting this thing the best they can. Um, I can never uh, say enough of that because... You know, you just want to hope for the best. So, uh, let's get this one started. So, in last place is the most recent one, uh, Ignite. That was the last studio the album they put out 12 years ago. And this one was coming off a hiatus already of seven years, I believe. And, um... So this is the last studio album. There has been an EP since uh, then, which was released to very little fanfare. Um, and uh, I met Trevor. I haven't. I'm not a guy that meets, you know, rock stars or heroes of mine. Um, you know, I don't go to meet and greets. I'm pretty shy. I'm pretty broke. But uh, I met Trevor 12 years ago, and he was like the nicest human being I've ever met. Uh, he was so gracious, and he's so humble and genuine, and uh, uh, I think, you know, I, I was a fan of this band when I was 10 or 11, and then that just made me a fan all over again, um, and uh, really stuck with me. Even throughout, there were some years where I wasn't really listening to a Conaline Crush, maybe two or three years, and uh, but I never you know, it's just, that wasn't what I was listening to at the time. I've, they've never fallen out of favor in my books, and uh, he's uh, just an amazing guy, and I can't wait for the, the new stuff and the documentary, uh, Flatlander, which is um, about him. It's not about a conline crush. It's about him and uh, nursing. Uh, he got his nursing degree, and he's been helping out people. Um, in the indig indigenous communities, so he's been doing, you know, some really nice work out there. Um, but back to the music, so this is last place, but this is a pretty cool record still. Um, the the first single was Dirty, um, the first track is Could Have Been, uh, that's a nice driving one. Dirty is kind of their stab at kind of pop, that pop rock, dance rock crossover. Uh, Get Out of the Way, which I mentioned, uh, that's the one they re-recorded recently. Um, that one was used as a song for the Edmonton hockey team whenever they scored a goal. Uh, that song would play, like, for a full season. 
That was cool. Um, Hole in My Heart is a really cool song. Um, yeah, there's some good ones. Um, nothing stands out as bad on this one, but uh, I just think it's the weaker one. Um, there's no inlet or inlay or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's a decent enough one. So there you go. Uh, the next one uh, is here. It's right here. It's invisible. Um, the next one is The People Have Spoken, which is an EP that came out in uh, 2011. And uh, the cheapest I've seen the CD version of this EP for is, I think, $100? I haven't seen it for sale for a long time on Discogs and that. Um, the, the actual vinyl is, I don't know, like $173 for three songs. Um, and I gotta say, this was during, I, I kind of was listening to other stuff during this time, 2011, and I kind of, you know, wasn't listening to a Conline Crush anymore, and then my friend that I actually introduced a Conline Crush to, um, we were on a camping trip together, and I think the EP had been out for a little while already, and he said, oh, have you heard the new Conline Crush? And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, usually I'm up on the new releases, but this one just stealth released. Like, it just came out to no fanfare, and I don't think any radio play. Thorn might have been a promo single, but no radio play, really. And uh, I'm like, no. And we listened to it, and I thought, oh, yeah, that's good. Um, you know, as good as Ignite. Um, right on. I'll check that out when I get home again. And then all throughout the trip, though, the song Afraid, or I'm Afraid, really stuck with me and I'm like that like it's an earworm and uh you know even though these guys do some crushing rock um ironically enough look at their name um it was really catchy and and earwormed in my ear they 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 also you know they have some really catchy stuff um so so that song is a, is a major takeaway from the EP as is um, Stay With Me, the, the first song. And I think they they could have, you know, promoted it better. It's probably not their fault, but one of the downfalls of this band is I think a lot of stuff doesn't get promoted uh, like it should, and uh, that's kind of hurt them because the material is great, but uh, the promotion, except for the kind of 96, 97, 98 era, is pretty, pretty lackluster. Um, but, you know, that's the fault of record labels and stuff like that. And they might have been on an indie, but uh, anyway. So, the people have spoken. Volume 1. Uh, there was never a volume 2. And, uh, like I said, the, the other track uh, is Thorn, and that sandwich between Stay With Me and I'm Afraid. And, uh, no, that one's good too. Um, so that's a testament to their quality is... Um, you know, all good stuff, but it's the, the penultimate one on, on the countdown. So, um, so that would be the number five. Um, Ignite was six. People have spoken volume one. Uh, <laughs> I love these volume ones that never get a two. It's always depressing. It happens a lot in music. It happens in, um, movies, too, but not as often. There's a lot of volume one records and greatest hits out there that never have a volume two. Um... But I digress, right? So, number four, and it feels weird to put this one so low, or so medium, because it's so good. But um, it's always hard to rank EPs against other material. And I'm um, sorry you can see the blinds in Wikipedia, and the, the lighting is not good in here. Um, but, uh, yeah, that really shows the, the testament. Oh, there we go. The testament to the quality of... Um, of the band and their works because this is number four and uh, there's not a, a, a bad track on the joint here. So um, it's the EP is bookended by Purge 1 and Purge 2, which are kind of like these spacey intro outro tracks um, in which uh, Trevor sings these kind of cryptic lyrics um, that ring true about, you know, you need. Um, pain to bring you pleasure, or something like that. Um, 
the first version of Out of Reach is on here. Uh, that would be re-recorded by the, the, the next lineup on uh, Affliction. One thing I neglected to say is every Econoline Crush release and tour has different players um, in the band. Um, Trevor Hurst is the only mainstay. It's kind of like King Crimson, where Robert Fripp was the only, uh, only, you know, band member throughout all the lineups. So, um, so that's, you know, the, the sound does vary a lot, but there's something very a Conline Crush about all of them. Like, I think just his spirit and his voice and lyrics really tie everything together. But yeah, this is the first, uh, incarnation, and this is kind of the most industrial, and it's kind of the most, um, heavy, I guess, because, um, uh, maybe Affliction is the most in industrial, but this one's the the heaviest because a lot of the stuff is like live off the floor or or close to. It's not a live record, but they recorded it pretty much live off the floor. You can definitely hear that in in Psych, uh, which is a Killing Joke cover, and a really good one at that. Um, this may be like heresy, but uh, I think that. Uh, I personally like this even more than the Killing Joke one, and Killing Joke is great, obviously, and uh, was huge to Trevor and probably the rest of the band at the time. Um, oh, sorry, I messed up on Out of Reach. So Out of Reach is on here, and then Cruel World is the one that the lineup from the Affliction era, which was the next era of the band, uh, re-recorded. And I think I like the Affliction one a little better. It's They're both really good, though. Um... That was a thing with the Conline Crush is, you know, they did it with Get Out of the Way recently, they did it with um, Cruel World here, and they did it with You Don't Know What It's Like, is the, the next lineup would record the, the same song as the prior one. Uh, you Don't Know What It's Like was a hidden track off the Ignite album in 08, and that was a re-recording of the um, 2000 song, uh, You Don't Know What It's Like, which is one of their biggest hits, I would say. Um, and it was kind of a standalone single for a while, and then it came out on uh, Brand New History. Um, yeah, so then we got uh, TDM, which was the one and only single, the first single from the record, and um, just a very anti, anti-police anti song, I guess. Um, very rebellious, and, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I used to put this song on my, like, cassette tapes after, like, a Rage Against the Machine song or something, because it's very, you know, F you, like, you know, F the cops, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's very angry, and, uh, you know, the subject matter is very different from, you know, the personal demons that Trevor would write and sing about on all the albums after, I guess. Um, this one's kind of just young, kind of punk mentality, and, uh, yeah, it's a, an amazing song, actually, and we saw them do this one live 12 years ago at uh, Lucky Bar um, to a, a small crowd, but a really receptive crowd. I think Trevor said, we are, we are small but mighty tonight, or something to that effect. Um, and yeah, he, he was totally right. It was a very intimate show, but uh, very awesome, you know, hard-hitting show, uh, so that, I think that was the sole, um, selection off this EP that they did live, you know, they, they went that far back, but only once, um, next up, so number three is Brand New History, and this one, when this came out, uh, after it came out, I thought that that was it for the band, I thought they'd never come back, you know, it was kind of the final blow, it didn't sell as well as the previous one at all, so, um, you know, the band kind of broke up because of, you know, label disputes and, you know, just when your sales are disappointing, it, you know, it sucks, obviously. The, the one before went platinum in Canada, this one didn't, but uh, it did well enough on radio in that. I remember, so you don't know what it's like, came out I six months or a year before, and it was only available on Big Shiny Tunes 4 um, for a while, and then... Um, it's a bonus track here. Um, it plays right after the last track, Tomorrow Starts Today. So until I look at the back of this, I always forget it's listed as a bonus track. It just sounds like 
the rest of the the album in quality. It's it's a great song. Um, Make it right is the the kickoff, and um, that one the production is just stellar. It's um, definitely was a new direction. Like fans weren't ready to hear just straight ahead rock, and um, Bob Rock actually produced it. So it's got a way more of a commercial sound, and doesn't have all the you know industrial um, production that you know we were all used to, and all the electronic sounds and um, all that stuff in the background. Uh, it's still a great song, just stylistically different, and that's the thing with this album, is I think a lot of the um, original fans, the OG fans, didn't like it as much as um, The Devil You Know and uh, Affliction, uh, because of that reason. It is definitely decidedly more commercial. Um, Flamethrower is on here, and that one, I remember hearing it on the radio, but I don't think it was a single. I think that with this record, you know, they had a hit with You Don't Know What It's Like, and then Make It Right, and then I think the record label probably knew they were breaking up, or knew that sales were st starting to flounder really fast, and just kind of like threw everything at the wall just to see what would stick, because I remember a lot of these songs were like, promo singles, or almost singles, um, moreover with Trash, which is a really, um, energetic, fast song, um, that one was definitely, uh, a radio single, I remember hearing that one a lot, um, By the Riverside is next, um, and Childhood Me, uh, this is only kid logic, when he says, I gotta make it right, in the lyrics, I thought it was a callback to make it right, the song, or he says, I'm going to make things right, I think. And uh, and I thought, oh, that means it's the next single when I got the album. That's child logic. It's like, well, it's not a callback. It's a very common phrase. But I'm like, because he says, make things right. And the song, the first song is Make It Right. By the Riverside is definitely the next single. It's like, what? <laughs> Why do kids think like that? Um, that one's a little bit more mellow than what's come before it. Um, and so that one's... That one's really good. Uh, the The chorus is still quite heavy, but uh, yeah, uh, that's a good one. Digging the heroin is um, also quite mellow. Um, not the subject matter, I guess, but uh, it, it's a great song. Um, it's heroin with an E. It's not like heroin, and I didn't know that as a kid. I thought it was kind of like Kurt Cobain, like a song about him, or like. Uh, Everclear had a song called Heroin Girl, and I was just learning about all these things, young and naive, and I'm like, oh, but this is just digging the, the girl and the, you know, playing your part in life and the play, and, uh, you know, it's, it's more about that. Uh, Go Off is kind of like trash, just, um, the song, not, it's not Garbo, it's, uh, it's, uh, just a really fast, energetic song, um, could have been played in like a sports video game or a snowboarding video game. It's very energetic and, and fun. Um, Sinking is a very catchy song. Um, all, all these songs kind of like, they're, they're pop rock. They're very catchy. They have catchy, you know, hook-laden choruses. Well-written, um, but definitely more Our Lady Peace. Um, later years than, you know, a Conline Crush, like, you know, the, the 90s, uh, heavier stuff, I guess. Um, May I Go was, uh, was also tried as a single, and I remember actually hearing it on Top 40 radio, so, you know, I don't think it got far in the, in the charts, but it was played alongside, like, these pop songs, like Britney Spears and stuff, and, uh, so that was probably the second time the band crossed over like that, because, um, they had a hit with, uh, The Devil You Know, um, the song All That You Are, that, that was kind of a crossover. Um, My Salvation was, I think, even tried as a single, I heard it on the radio twice, and one of the DJs said, this is the new Econline Crush single, and I think that was the last stab at trying to make this get more radio play, um, so that one didn't work, um, but it, as a song, it's it's kind of like sinking. It's just got this really um, poppy chorus, just the way it's sung and everything. Um, but it's still it's still definitely a rock song. Um, 
here and there is uh, kind of a forgotten gem. It's definitely one of my highlights from this one. Um, the the whole refrain where he goes, um, you know, broken brain makes me forget why I'm running out of here. And, uh, and uh, oh, what's the rest of the lyrics here? Come on, crush. Um, just just got to look this up here. Um, yeah, this, this song does something special, and, uh, it's, it, it always feels shorter than it is, and it always makes me want to replay it again, because it's, it's just so, so good. Um, uh, Broken Break makes me forget. Uh, oh, I wonder, was it fake? Fate took my head off. Uh, why'd you come around here? The, the... The way he sings this song and the backing vocals, which I assume are Ziggy, Ziggy Sigmund, who's been in many incarnations of the Conway Crush, and I think he's a great friend of Trevor's. Um, just, you know, that combination, it, it's, it just is a winning combination. It works. Um, and then Tomorrow Starts Today is a very um, kind of introspective song, kind of, uh, you know, caps off their career quite well, I guess. Um, I didn't like it as a kid because it was too slow, so I'd always skip it, but now you know, it stands out because it's different, and I, I I think it's solid. I like it a lot. I, I really like the whole album a lot. I know people would slag it off. Um, I think the only thing bad about it was the artwork, and uh, I remember I had a poster, and it had all this kind of like, you know, almost propaganda-looking crap on it, and uh, like planes and everything, and... I remember a friend of my a friend of mine came over to play Smash Brothers as we were entering high school, and he kind of looked around and he just honed in on that. And he's like, "What the hell is that? Like, <laughs> like what are you a communist or something?" Um, and I thought, "Yeah, the, the artworks. You know, I, I liked having the poster just because it was a Conline crush, but it's like, wow, their artwork for this one's kind of lame." Um, and it had a more deluxe packaging that I guess I lost somewhere along the way. Um, but yeah, it had that poster tucked in there, which that one's probably lost too. You know, moved too many times or, you know. So I don't know where it is. I probably don't own it anymore. Um, then, uh, okay, now we're at number two, Affliction, which uh, that's Trevor's face, a young... Young Trevor, excuse me, on the cover there. And, uh, I wish that this band, because, you know, everything they did that was popular came out in the CD era, I wish they'd, uh, reissue some of these on vinyl, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, this one is, um, just solid all the way through, like, like the last one, like the next one. Um, definitely the, the first side, or the first half, is more memorable, has more hooks in that, but, um, the quality is consistently great. It's just I always remember the uh, the the first you know six songs the most, and I kind of forget the other ones. And then when I play them, it's like oh yeah, like you know this is amazing. But you know I forgot how it went. Um, they were kind of on the cusp of you know pop songwriting in their heavier rock tracks, but uh, they kind of make that shift more with the next one, I guess. Um, Nowhere Now, uh, big soaring, uh, song, uh, great opener, actually. Um, this band really knew how to do opening songs, geez. Uh, Blunt, which was a big crowd, crowd favorite, and just has, some um, that, uh, crazy panning from left to right of, of Trevor saying, nothing, 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 and then screaming, nothing! And, um, yeah, this one was always a crowd pleaser live it, it it works really well um wicked which was a single and had a video and everything wasn't a, a hit or anything but uh, i remember the video i remember it getting played a couple times um i think that one of the most underrated songs maybe the most underrated of their career is emotional stain it comes it's sandwiched between wicked and close which were two singles but it's just this really kind of riffy, synthesized, like, sort of 70s meets 80s, but in the 90s, <laughs> with 90s production song, it, it sounds really, I don't know, there's just something about it, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's a long song, too, 
and it's got an amazing um, chorus. Um, yeah, I, I think if I was making a top 10 EC tracks, I would definitely put that one in. Uh, Close is next, as I said, uh, which was a single. Um, didn't go anywhere. But, uh, yeah, I think that was... I think there were three singles from this record. Um, and then Blood in the River. Uh, that one's great. Cruel World, as I mentioned when I was talking about the Purge EP. That was re-recorded here. Um, I Lost, Slug, and Sycophant. I mean, the, 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 the record gets really dark and... Um, I guess it's all the the better for it. it. It really works well. It's a very mysterious record. Um, again, Trevor, I think the writing for him was therapeutic. I get that in all their material. There's, there's just something really, um, I don't know. I think he just got a lot off his chest and a lot off his mind. So his, mind. his lyric is, is really good. His lyrics. Bleh. I can't talk today. I got mush mouth. Um, I'll have to say Toy Boat every time I mess up from here on, so, like, Weekend Update in the 70s. Um, and then Affliction, uh, the title track, is also the last track, and, um, yeah, I, I don't know, there's, there's no critique with this, it's just an amazing album, really. If you like Canadian rock, you should listen to this, because I think it gets slept on a lot, mostly because it was followed by this. Which is um, the monster, you know, gargantuan Econoline Crush record. So as you cannot tell, it's called The Devil You Know, which it says down there. You'd think they'd want to advertise the name of their album a little better, but there you go. Um, there's the band on the back, that lineup. Um, Trevor and Ziggy over there. <laughs> Pointed at the wrong guy. Um... And, uh, yeah, I can never remember who's in, in which lineup at what time. Um, but this, I guess this is the Canadian edition, because I've seen another cover where it's them, like, standing in a hallway, and I could never tell which one I liked more. And then it comes on Delicious Purple CD there. Um, and this one, this is just a classic. It, it must be one of the best records released that year, in my opinion. Um, so this one's got Surefire on it, aka Never Enough. They often on the radio would put Never Enough in parenthesis, because I don't think he says Surefire in the lyrics. Anyway, that's one of their hookiest songs. It, it gets stuck in your ear, that, uh, stuck in your head. Um, Sparkle and Shine, which, uh, I guess was written about Shannon Hoon from Blind Melon. And, you know, he certainly did do that in his short life, but Trevor was kind of affected by that. And uh, he wrote one of the band's best songs about it. And Surefire and Sparkle and Shine were both big hits on the alternative radio scene. And I remember them getting radio... or I just said that, radio play. I remember them getting uh, music video play, too. Uh, Deeper is next, and um, that's a, a really great song that could have been a single. Um... That's uh, Don't Let Them Beat You, Don't Let Them Win. And then the, the, the chorus is like, it's all kind of dark and, you know, they, they're kind of this dark, gothic, industrial tinge. But then the the um, the, uh, the chorus is like, um, oh, my love is never ending, like a refrain of that. And it gets really tender. They really straddle that line and, and uh, you know, balance the, the darkness with... You know, some beauty and love in there. Uh, Hollow Man is the next one, which might be one of the band's biggest, heaviest songs ever. Um, Home, which was also a single. There were five singles from this. Eleven tracks, five singles. It's like, wow, what are you guys, Michael Jackson? Like, that's pretty impressive. Um, and I remember loving Home and just becoming a huge fan just based on that song. And the other ones, I, I loved them all, and I, I knew I had to have this album. Um, and then The Devil You Know, uh, which is the title track, obviously, is next. And I never knew people paid attention to this one or liked this one, but on Spotify, if the statistics are anything to go by, it's one of their, like, six or seven most popular songs. And it wasn't even a single, so that's pretty good. Um, and, th you know, it could have been a single, too, because it's got this really kind of poppy... 
I am the one, the devil you know. And, uh, yeah, it's just amazingly written, amazingly. <laughs> You're not going to get too many critical reviews, because I enjoy this stuff too much. Um, and then All That You Are, which is always stylized as All That You Are times three, which I always thought was funny. Um, that one is the, uh, the biggest hit from the band ever, I think. And that, that was really their commercial peak. It got a tons of play on modern rock radio and mainstream rock radio, and then also pop. Um, and, uh, it had this different radio mix that was a little different than the studio version, which is interesting. Um, and, and even the music video looked really decidedly mainstream compared to everything these guys had done before. And I guess that's marketing for you or whatever, but the music video almost looked like a, a pros music video, like Ghetto Superstar or something. Um, maybe there's some parallels there, but, uh, yeah, I always thought the music video was very interesting and very unlike the band, but it's kind of this, this artifact to time, I guess. Um, and then we get some rockers with Burnt and, uh, Elegant, but then sandwiched between those is Haven't Gone Away, which, just like Deeper, is kind of like a little bit, um, mellower, you know, a nice break from all the action, um, but just, I don't know, dude, like, another five star track it's it's great and then elegant is um you know kind of a song you could drive to or race to it's very um high energy and uh yeah it's really great and then uh lastly is um maybe the most emotional of any song by the band which is sing a lot but razor blades and band-aids which i heard that at the end you can actually hear trevor like crying i think they mean as in his vocal performance i don't I mean, he's sobbing at the mic, but he unloaded a lot of emotional baggage in his lyrics in general. Um, but, you know, in, in this song specifically, um, he's really having at her. And um, this song sometimes got played on the radio. It was, I believe it was the fifth of the five singles. But, um, yeah, the fact that a song like this would get played, like, no one would care this much uh, today, if someone was uh, pouring their heart out so much, I mean, there are some people like me that would still care, but I can't see this making it anymore, but, uh, that, that's an amazing song, it's, it's definitely a highlight as well, uh, the whole thing is highlights, uh, it's just a classic record, in my opinion, and, um, yeah, and one of the reasons why I love them so much, but, you know, they, they're all reasons, so, that was the countdown, ranked uh here's the count up so number one devil you know number two affliction number three from 2001 it's brand new history number four is the per gp the band's recorded debut uh number what is it five <laughs> the people have spoken volume one doesn't exist physically. No, it does, but it's re really hard to get and really expensive. Like, one day maybe I'll get it or they'll reissue it. And then number six, it's um, Ignite from 2008. And then I uh, just wanted to say quickly that if you're new to the band or whatever, pick up Surefire, the best of. Um, it's mostly songs off The Devil You Know, but they've um, put in some affliction songs here there's like three or four and some brand new history songs there's three yeah and one from the ep purge nothing from ignite because i guess this came out on emi and they didn't own ignite uh they just rushed this out 2010 the band seemed like they were pretty much done and they just they wanted to make money i guess uh emi did so they rushed this out with a lame album cover that some kid could make on their computer. But uh, as a set, this is great. And even though I don't like the album art, the great thing about this great Greatest Hits is um, there's actually like little stories about all the songs. They have little commentaries from the band. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's like Trash was recorded and, you know, I think this is a good song, but... It's Better Live, they got Siggy, Ziggy Sigmund, uh, Dan Yarmko, uh, Robbie Morfitt, they're all commentating on it, Trevor Hurst, you know, obviously, he 
speaks of every track and he says where he got the melody ideas or why why he wrote it or you know they're just they're just tiny little commentaries uh the the bold is when someone new starts talking but um even though it's just a sentence or two from everyone it's I love that kind of thing, and there's so many lazy greatest hits, and you'd think it, it is because of this awful album art. There's the other side. But, um, no, uh, you know, just getting stuff like that, like, you go, oh, you can read it on the internet, but, like, if, if you look at this band's Wikipedia page or something, there's not really that much there. I don't think there's a, a community or a message board, so where else are you going to get little juicy tidbits like that? Um, I love that kind of stuff when they include that. Uh, so I, I would say it's it's a worthwhile greatest hits 14 songs and different mixes of um, of some of the songs the the home song is the radio mix wicked is the mantra mix uh, all that you are times three is the boomtang extended mix I don't know if that has anything to do with the boomtang boys or not maybe they were Canadian too so um, uh, surefire never enough is the fahrenheit 451 remix um so just even getting those bonus mixes like i had all these songs but i didn't have those versions of those four songs so and just i mean as a completist i wanted to have it but that that made it an even more interesting listen also the it's not chronological it's just kind of like this random mix, so it's interesting to see what um, order they put things in. And then I found this at a, a pawn shop or whatever uh, years ago, but years after it came out, it came out in 05, it's Hearst. So that's obviously Trevor Hearst, his um, project at the time. And interestingly, this is kind of like, it's, it's like, is it a, a studio album or an EP? Because it's seven songs. Um... I feel like there was supposed to be more after this, but this is all that came out of that. But it was Trevor Hurst, obviously, Hurst, um, and Ross Childress of uh, Collective Soul, who is known for, you know, being the maybe the best of their guitarists, um, definitely for being there for the most commercially successful of their albums, the first five. And, um, yeah, he just... Um, you know, he never made it after Collective Soul, really, but he just turns up random places or plays in random groups. And the fact that him and Trevor hooked up uh, to work on material is just pretty incredible to a guy like me that, you know, loves their work. And um, unfortunately, out of all the, the Hearst's related stuff, like all the EC records, um, you know, this would get the least play for me. I, I think the... The song Not Broken is pretty interesting, um, but nothing really hit me that much. I sort of owe this a few more listens, though, um, but it's amazing to have. And there's Trevor right there. Um, yeah, just the fact this came out in 05, and I didn't really even know when it came out, and then I found out years later, and then... Very close to the time I found out, I found it, like I said, a used copy, and obviously I had to have it. It was, I think it was only a buck or two, but uh, yeah, it's called Wonderlust, by the way. I didn't, didn't even say the title. There we go. So, I'm excited. I'm really excited this band is coming back, and I, I have the order in. Um, I think the, the new LP is supposed to be at the end of the summer. But just the fact that the, the new single's out now, um, it's on Spotify, it's on whatever you listen to, probably. Um, and yeah, they just uploaded it last night, and I listened a few times, and I was just really happy. And Get Out of the Way was not even ever my favorite you know, Conaline Crush song, or, or even close to it. But the re-recording sounded really good, and there was a lot of energy, and Trevor sounded amazing still and you know just all all those factors alone made me really hyped and, and really happy and uh you know when these bands go away you miss them so much and it's so nice that they're back and uh i'm so ready for whatever they put out and i'm so happy they're back and i, I can't wait for the new album it's gonna be amazing and uh yeah so um you know, thanks for, for joining me. Uh, sorry I, I ramble on, but it is kind of my M.O. 
and uh, you know I hope there's uh, there's other fans out there that are really excited about it like I am uh, please you know comment if you have any comments about the band or if you uh, you know have anything else you want to say or add um, and uh, that's about it I guess for today um, yeah like and subscribe more videos coming soon got lots more ideas and uh, you know share the love of music and uh, yeah peace and love everyone adios for now